Imagine you're lying in bed at night, and suddenly you start hearing a rhythmic thumping or whooshing sound in your ears. It's not coming from outside. It feels like it's actually inside your head, keeping time with your heartbeat. This isn't the soundtrack of a horror movie. It's a real condition called pulsatile tinnitus. Pulsatile tinnitus is like having your own drum beat that only you can hear. It's different from the usual ringing in the ears that some people experience. This type has a beat to it, mirroring the rhythm of your heart. It's as if your ears have become overly sensitive to the natural music of your body's blood flow, turning it into an unwanted internal symphony. The reasons behind this peculiar internal concert can vary. Sometimes it's just because you have high blood pressure, making your blood flow more forcefully than usual, so your ears pick up on it. Other times, it could be because of a kink in the blood vessels near your ears, creating a sort of whistling effect as the blood squeezes through. Then there are more unusual reasons, like tiny tumors that press on blood vessels, adding their own beat to the mix. While pulsatile tinnitus might make you feel like you're carrying around your own internal orchestra, it's a signal from your body that shouldn't be ignored. In many cases, it's just a quirky thing that happens without a serious cause. But sometimes, it can be a clue to something more serious going on inside, requiring a doctor's attention to conduct the orchestra into silence once again. So let's explore together what can hide behind pulsatal tinnitus. Pulsatal tinnitus is a subtype of tinnitus characterized by the perception of rhythmic sounds that often pulse in synchrony with the individual's heartbeat. This condition is usually caused by abnormal blood flow near the ears, changes in the ear itself, or systemic conditions that affect the vascular system. Individuals with pulsatile tinnitus may describe hearing sounds like whooshing, thumping, or humming, which are typically synchronous with their pulse. How common is pulsatile tinnitus? Pulsatile tinnitus is relatively rare compared to non-pulsatile, continuous tinnitus. It's estimated that pulsatile tinnitus affects less than 10% of individuals who report having tinnitus. Unlike non-pulsatile tinnitus, which is often idiopathic, having no identifiable cause, pulsatile tinnitus has a detectable cause in a significant number of cases. Research indicates that an underlying cause can be identified in up to 80% of pulsatile tinnitus cases when patients undergo comprehensive diagnostic evaluations, including advanced imaging techniques. The potentially identifiable nature of its causes means that pulsatile tinnitus can often be effectively treated or managed once the underlying issue is addressed. For example, if pulsatile tinnitus is due to high blood pressure, managing the blood pressure can alleviate the symptoms. The key difference between pulsatile tinnitus and other forms of tinnitus lies in its nature and underlying causes. While standard tinnitus is often perceived as a constant ringing, buzzing, hissing, or whistling sound in the ears without a regular rhythm, pulsatile tinnitus has a pulsating characteristic that mirrors the heartbeat. This distinction is crucial because pulsatile tinnitus is more likely to be associated with physical processes or abnormalities within the body, such as blood flow disturbances, making it potentially more diagnosable and treatable through medical intervention. Other forms of tinnitus are generally thought to originate from neural activity within the auditory pathway. They may be linked to hearing loss, exposure to loud noise, ototoxic drugs, or various autologic, metabolic, or neurological conditions. Unlike pulsatile tinnitus, these forms of tinnitus do not typically correspond to the rhythm of the individual's pulse and are considered more subjective often making them more challenging to diagnose and treat with specific interventions. Understanding this distinction is crucial for healthcare providers when diagnosing and formulating treatment plans for patients presenting with tinnitus symptoms, as the approach for pulsatile tinnitus may involve evaluating and treating vascular or structural issues, while other tinnitus types might focus on auditory rehabilitation and symptom management. What causes pulsatile tinnitus? Pulsatile tinnitus unlike idiopathic tinnitus, usually has a specific, 
identifiable cause. Nonetheless, uncertainty often arises in clinical practice about the findings to be sought and the strategy for workup. However, despite careful examination, no cause is found in up to 30% of patients. Pulsatile tinnitus might be caused by the following conditions. First, general medical conditions like high blood pressure, anemia, or hyperthyroidism. While these conditions can contribute to pulsatile tinnitus, they are generally manageable with lifestyle changes and medication. Next, the most common local or regional conditions that can contribute to pulsatile tinnitus are middle ear effusion, in which case the fluid accumulation in the middle ear can alter ear pressure and sound perception. Temporal bone dehiscence is caused by a small missing piece of bone in the ear, which can amplify sounds, but is often not dangerous. Paget's disease of bone affects the skeleton, but rarely leads to serious complications related to the ear, except in severe cases. Venous hum is often a benign condition caused by increased blood flow through the jugular veins, usually not indicative of a serious health issue, can be heard through a stethoscope and is thought to be caused by altered blood flow behaviors, usually in anemia. The resulting turbulences are perceived as humming sounds. Turbulent blood flow can result from narrowing or kinking of neck arteries, carotid arteries, or veins, jugular veins. The vascular etiology of pulsatile tinnitus can be classified by its site of origin as arterial, arteriovenous, or venous. Typical arterial causes are arteriosclerosis, dissection, and fibromuscular dysplasia. Arteriosclerotic plaques and stenosis in the vessels of the head and neck are the most common causes of pulsatile tinnitus in the elderly. Fibromuscular dysplasia, a segmental vascular disease that often leads to stenosis, can cause pulsatile tinnitus, particularly in younger persons. Steno-occlusive vascular diseases found mainly in younger patient groups also include vascular dissection, in which case the vascular lumen is narrowed by a hematoma on the vessel wall. Aneurysms of the internal carotid artery or the vertebral artery often lead to turbulent blood flow, but it is surprisingly rare for them to become clinically manifest as pulsatile tinnitus. Dissecting aneurysms are exceptions to this. Anatomical variants and abnormalities of the arteries, like the rare ectopic internal carotid artery, carotid cochlear dehiscence, and persistent stapedial artery. It has been observed that the frequency of vascular loops in the inner ear is higher in individuals with pulsatile tinnitus. Common causes at the arteriovenous junction include arteriovenous fistulae and highly vascularized skull base tumors. Arteriovenous fistulas can cause unbearably loud pulsatile roaring sounds that can often be heard by the clinician too. Typical tumors that are rich in blood vessels are paragangliomas, called glomus tumors, benign tumors of the base of the skull. Pulsatile tinnitus is one of the symptoms of tympanic and jugular paragangliomas. Tympanic paragangliomas are otoscopic visible as a reddish pulsating space, occupying lesion behind the tympanic membrane. Common venous causes are intracranial hypertension and, as predisposing factors, anomalies and normal variants of the basal veins and sinuses. Potentially serious conditions causing pulsatile tinnitus are arteriovenous malformations. These are abnormal connections between arteries and veins that can lead to serious complications if ruptured. Carotid cavernous fistulas are abnormal connections between the carotid artery and the cavernous sinus, which can lead to increased pressure and blood flow issues in the brain. Intracranial hypertension means elevated pressure of cerebrospinal fluid inside the skull, which can cause headaches, vision problems, and potentially life-threatening complications. Atherosclerotic carotid artery disease involves plaque buildup in the carotid artery that can increase the risk of stroke. Glomus tumors, although usually benign, can grow and cause significant complications due to their position. To establish the cause of pulsatile tinnitus, 
A series of clinical tests are usually performed with various indications. The patient's drug history is important, as some substances, ACE inhibitors, calcium antagonists, favor pulsatile tinnitus. Provocation and rotation maneuvers can be used to distinguish whether the tinnitus sounds are arterial or venous in origin. Essential examinations include taking blood pressure, determining body mass index, testing for anemia, and ruling out hyperthyroidism. The hearing must be tested. Otoscopy must check for otitis and search for any vascular structure behind the eardrum. A search for neurological symptoms of increased intracranial pressure, headache, visual disturbance with papilledema, double vision, and in the case of serious intracranial hypertension, nausea, and vomiting, should be performed, as should lumbar puncture, measuring CSF pressure if required. Full Doppler ultrasound of the head and neck vessels is also essential. CT scan and MRI which complement each other. Magnetic resonance angiography, MRA, is useful in imaging arteries that supply the brain, while veins and sinuses are better represented by CT angiography, CTA. Imaging must never be considered in isolation. It must always be interpreted in the context of clinical findings. If no other causes can be identified for confirmed pulsatile tinnitus that is synchronous with the pulse, DSA is indicated. Digital Subtraction Angiography As a symptom, pulsatile tinnitus has many, highly varied causes and involves several clinical disciplines. This gives rise to the interface problem. Diagnosis is often only possible if all clinical findings are collated and critically assessed in conjunction with imaging results. Ideally, this should be performed by a multidisciplinary team with structured diagnostic pathways. Key messages to take home about pulsatile tinnitus. Pulsatile tinnitus is a syndrome with multiple etiologies. A specific cause can be found in three quarters of cases. Tinnitus can be classified as arterial, arteriovenous, or venous, depending on the source of the sound. Targeted clinical examination must attempt to locate the sound according to this classification. Clinical warning signs that are grounds for suspecting a potentially serious underlying disease are focal neurological symptoms, signs of increased intracranial pressure, and objective tinnitus. Pulsatile tinnitus can also be the first indication of stenosis of arteries serving the brain, so examination for such stenosis must be performed. CT angiography and MRI-MR angiography are the essential imaging procedures to be used. Digital subtraction, angiography is indicated if an arteriovenous fistula is suspected. Imaging results must always be interpreted together with the results of clinical examination. This requires multidisciplinary teamwork. If you found this video informative and helpful, please subscribe to my channel for future medical updates. Until next time, stay healthy.